Welcome back to the Daily Dope. I'm your host, Brando. And, um, so, you know, like, yesterday I found this information out, uh, pretty much right as it was being released to the public. Uh, but I was waiting to do this story until I had a few more pieces of the puzzle. Now, what we're talking about here is Michigan making a statement. It's from the Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs, same people who oversee the uh, licensing and regulations concerning the new medical marijuana licensing facilities, Facilities Licensing Act, I should say. And um, if passed the regulate like marijuana regulate marijuana like alcohol initiative in november will also be um they will also use the department for you know regulations of that kind (laughs) so let's get in to the actual uh story in a second but before we do i have to question why everybody's coming off sounding kind of like this is a positive thing um now there was one outlet the metro times and even the the u.s news article that americans for safe access uh linked in this tweet here um kind of take a non-biased approach uh whereas the metro times kind of even maybe takes more of a of approach against this move so let's check it out now i've i've uh, already privately messaged americans for safe access and further reiterated that i would like to get an answer from them about this decision um but since this decision was made uh you you may have seen my thumbnail this is what i came across today was a local um, outlet that was selling uh, CBD that was hemp-derived. They had several products. There was actually two display cases full of products, Um, and they had um, uh, information, educational information. And the people that run this operation were very nice, very uh, informed and helpful and uh yeah it was sad to see that just like that this outlet was basically vaporized and what you know in a nutshell just just when you read their tweet it just sounds kind of like they they feel like maybe this is a good decision or a step in the right direction or something so michigan to now regulate cbd oil as cannabis and then there's an article here like I said, that's that's just links to this U.S. news article about this uh, decision. So safe access, hashtag end pain, not lives, hashtag medical cannabis, hashtag medical marijuana. I don't know how to take this, whether it's a, whether they're for this or against it. Sebastian, whoever this is down here, is like, what the hell? <laughs> And basically, my response is, please check your inboxes. I have asked for a statement from you about this. Already, I've seen a hemp-derived CBD outlet shut down literally overnight because of this statement. Sick people are now being forced into the medical marijuana registry at their expense slash inconvenience. Outlets who want to just sell CBD-only products or other outlets who wish to also carry CBD products are now going to have to go through the burdensome process of becoming a medical marijuana facility, which can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to go through. Now, I've heard people say stuff like, oh, they sell CBD at Walmart and um, Kroger. All right, there's two, two things about that. First of all, I have not seen any CBD products sold at Walmart or uh, any other big box store. So if somebody does have something like that that they, in Michigan, have seen or can point me to where I can go buy some of this myself, please let me know. <clears throat> and as far as uh, Kroger's goes, um, we looked into it, and the corporate office in Michigan has taken the position of, of making no comment about it. 
and those two Kroger stores I have personally checked in the Flint area do not sell any CBD products at this time. Um, so that's in a nutshell, <clears throat> that's what this, uh, this is all coming down to now. Um, let's see, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this. <clears throat> so yeah, there we go. So what we have here is, <laughs> sorry, what we had there. What we have here is what CBD products are that are sold in medical marijuana dispensaries. Uh, I guess I can't pull that up. Sorry. I'll get to that in a second. So let's go ahead and read some of this real quick. Um, consuming CBD if you're not a medical marijuana patient is illegal, Michigan regulators say. Now that's the proper way to word that. Um, and furthermore, you got to look at this condition uh, conditions list, specific medical conditions listed in the medical marijuana statute are these, uh, cancer, glaucoma, uh, HIV, AIDS, hepatitis C, ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease, Crohn's disease, agitation of Alzheimer's disease, nail patalia. And then there's general diseases and conditions not listed but are authorized, which include uh, cachexia or wasting syndrome, severe and chronic pain, nausea, seizures, including but not limited to those characteristic of epilepsy, severe and persistent muscle spasms, including but not limited to those characteristic of multiple sclerosis. And <clears throat> so you didn't see any sleeping disorders mentioned in there or anxiety or any other thing that people do take CBD for. Um, there's a whole list of stuff that you can, you can look into what CBD is good for and notice that a lot of it is not on this list. So now you are going to a doctor and if you are treating with a condition that's not on this list, you have to figure something else out. Um, now there's stipulations as to how doctors can go around this list but I don't know if um, in the in the let's just say in the climate we're in right now with doctors in Michigan, I don't feel like too many doctors are going to try to go into any gray areas for you. All right. But anyway, um, if you're a patient and you want to get CBD, no longer can you go to the gas station or the store that just sold CBD only right next to the dispensary that sold everything. Um, and there, there is a distinction between CBD de that is hemp derived and CBD that is from cannabis plants that are known as medical marijuana plants in Michigan. And we'll get into that too. But besides all that, the real problem here is the distribution is going to be heavily, heavily, heavily curtailed. And the probably the biggest thing that I noticed about all this is that uh, Michigan deciding to be one of the few states, if not, you know, one of the only states with a medical marijuana program uh, that's really good or that was really good, um, that decided that CBD that is derived from hemp is totally not allowed. And we don't, you know, who cares what, you know, people are doing in other states. And you'll see why they can say that in a second. So let's go ahead and read some of this, this stuff. CBD or cannabidiol is the cannabis compound that can relieve your pain without making you feel high. It comes from a marijuana plant and will be regulated in accordance with the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act, state officials say, and they just issued notice. Clarification from the state's marijuana regulatory body comes in response to confusion over the legality of CBD, which on its own does not contain the intoxicant THC. <clears throat> we were getting a lot of questions regarding CBDs and what licensees can and can't do, and do you have to be a, a license to sell it or not, said David Harnes, spokesman for the Michigan Bureau of Medical Marijuana Regulation. We figured how uh, now was a good time uh, as any to answer those questions. 
The rationale behind the state's determination that CBD is to be regulated like marijuana is based on the definitions in marijuana, of marijuana in the Michigan Public Health Code, the BMMR notice says. <clears throat> and this is kind of the same way that the DEA and FDA kind of bunches CBD in with anything that has to do with marijuana because it, has, it comes from the marijuana plant. And that's how there has been distinguish, uh, distinctions made between hemp-derived CBD in situations where commercial CBD production has been uh, going on. But you do remember that the FDA has been pushing back on this the whole way through. Like the, the most recently, the FDA um, said that, or they they basically. Man, got a hold of the manufacturers of CBD products and told them that they can no longer say that CBD is something that you can use to treat cancer with. Uh, back to the article. Cannabinoids, which include cannabidiol, are more abundant in the flowering tops, resin, and leaves of the cannabis plant and are not found in the parts of the cannabis plant that are excluded from the definition of marijuana. The guidance says... Inclusions or exclusions includes the stalks of the plant. The notice also clarifies that the legal use of industrial hemp from which CBD can be derived. Quote, the Industrial Hemp Research Act limits industrial hemp to cultivation or research and does not authorize its sale or transfer, the notice says. Um, Michigan policy seems to differ from that of other states. According to a High Times report published earlier this year, some states allow people to freely consume CBD-based products as long as they contain less than 0.3% THC. The Marijuana News publication reports Delaware allows CBD oil to contain up to 5% THC. The guidance from Michigan's marijuana regulatory body comes a year and a half after the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency determined CBD was illegal by saying that the only way you can come up with CBD is through a marijuana plant, whether that be hemp or otherwise. Now, I've heard people tell me, but Brandon, isn't CBD and other cannabinoids readily available and found in other things like black pepper and turmeric and other things that you can find in nature and other plants? And I say to that, to According to this right here, um, cannabinoids are most abundant in the flowering tops and leaves of the cannabis plant. Um, and CBD is so abundant in cannabis and hemp plants that you might as well just change the name of them to CBD plants. Because there's a lot of CBD in them. Well, you know, when it comes to commercial, mar regular marijuana that everybody smokes to get high or whatever... There's very little CBD in that, if any, in some strains, because over the years, the CBD has been bred out of a lot of strains so that there's more THC because that was the desired medicine uh, and medicinal effect of the majority of people that use marijuana um, is the THC euphoria, which can be used um, medicinally for any number of uh, mental applications and that's pretty much you know where I stand on that whenever someone says something about recreational marijuana there is no such thing it's all medicinal but you know anyway I'm not going to read the full notice here but this article here this Metro Times one I will go ahead and link below if you want to read this um, there's really nothing in this notice that doesn't basically get covered um, in the the articles that I'm about to read, which the, pretty much this is the only other one, and I'm not really going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to brush up a couple of talking points they did here. Like the department, and this is the, uh, let's go back and credit this. This Metro Times article was posted by Violet Iconomova, Iconomova <laughs> on Thursday. Um, thank you for this article. And then we have this U.S. News and World Report article by Alice Yin from the Associated Press. 
And I'll give you a couple things from this. The Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs issued its first clarification of CBD oil, declaring that state laws allow for its sale on medical marijuana patients, as long as the oil comes from marijuana and not hemp. <clears throat> and that is why, you know, the, uh, the business that I showed that's in the thumbnail, um, that's why they're done, because, you know... They were, this was hemp only uh, CBD products. Now, I do have a photo of some. Right here. What we have is, <clears throat> you know, this is what you could buy at a regular dispensary. Um, <clears throat> and it's Simpson oil that is super high in CBD and low in THC. So it's canatonic number four is the strain of, you know, cannabis that it came from. Canatonic is considered a marijuana plant rather than a hemp plant because the THC levels in a canatonic plant can range from uh, under 1% to over 20%. And a canatonic number four plant is famous for being high in CBD and low in THC. And usually a good canatonic number four will <clears throat> generally have 15 or a little more percent T, uh, CBD and between five and one percent THC. Now this pure oil here uh, has 82 percent CBD and 7.3 percent THC. So that's basically the difference between a, um, a CBD product and a derived from uh, marijuana plants rather than hemp plants is this THC number is going to be way lower if you made this, this Simpson oil from hemp derived uh, <clears throat> source. And that's about it for that. <clears throat> so CBD oil can be derived from either of the two plants which are both from a form of cannabis though cbd does not give users the same high feeling commonly associated with smoking pot and that's the big deal that's why so many people will show up at those cbd only um or yeah cbd only uh stores because for one you didn't have to have a medical marijuana card to go there and for two, they didn't have to get highly regulated or even looked at twice by the, you know, local um, municipality if they were operating. I'll uh, read the rest of this New York, or uh, U.S. News and World Report. So Ariana Walsh, co-owner of a business in eastern Michigan selling hemp-based oil, said her customers are mainly seeking pain relief. Some find her stores named Mother Earth Natural Health after being recommended by doctors, she said. Quote, it would definitely have an impact on a lot of people that are finding a safe way to get that relief, Welch said about the new notice. Relief from pain, inflammation, anxiety, and sleep issues are the most common reasons. And yes, those uh, t two out of those four weren't even on the list. And up and coming, any upcoming fluctuations in CBD oil sales May soon be moot, however, Michigan residents might see a ballot initiative this fall to legalize rec recreational marijuana as well as industrial hemp. Wishful thinking, indeed. About that. So, here's the initiative he's talking about that people will be able to vote on in November. That is polling currently at 61%, and by all calculations and estimations from everybody I've heard and read into no matter if they were a pro or anti-marijuana outlet or source pretty much everybody thinks it's going to pass so what is what is there in this about CBD or hemp well since CBD plants from marijuana plants are already going to be covered under this uh, new new law <clears throat> we'll just look at what hemp, what it says about hemp because you know we're talking about hemp derived cbd here and 
the regulation of it, which a lot of states have went ahead and let people do commercial um, hemp and CBD production, which is why you have so many of these products that you can order online and they'll ship it to you no matter what state you live in. And I'm, you know, to be, if you wanted to ask me a question about that, so even though the Laura made this decision to announce this and make it so immediately everybody that's selling hemp derived CBD is breaking the law, what do you know? And you're, you're going to ask me, is it still legal for me to buy this from an online source or a, you know, an out of state source that says they'll mail it anywhere? Is it legal to still buy it from them and have it shipped to your house and for you to possess it. And I say to that, um, consuming CBD is considered using medical marijuana in Michigan now. So if, unless you have a medical marijuana card, um, you'd be the same thing as if you were smoking a joint and you didn't have a medical marijuana card. Sounds ridiculous, but that's basically what it means. <clears throat> uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and, I mean, you know, I'm not going to say don't order the CBD from a source out of state, uh, but I'm guess I'm going to just take a wild guess that some of these these manufacturers that do ship to other states is going to make an exception for Michigan based on this because nobody wants to get anybody in trouble. But, you know, this is, if you don't think this is putting a huge dent in the amount of CBD that's being used in Michigan right now at this very moment, you are sadly mistaken. Just when I was at that store taking the pictures of their display cases and their sign out front, at least 10 people came and left looking for CBD. And none of them had med cards because there's a dispensary that sells the the uh, marijuana derived CBD right next door in the same building. So they just basically did a U-turn after they found out that the the shelves were empty, and it looked like they were driving around town already from place to place to see if anybody was still selling it. And this is the day after the decision was made to make the announcement. By the way, it still is. So. Uh, let's see what they say about hemp in the uh, regulate marijuana like alcohol. So here we have a thing that just says that this is initiation of legal uh, legislation to allow under state law the personal possession and use of marijuana, blah, 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 and to provide for f for the lawful cultivation and sale of marijuana and industrial hemp by persons 21 years age, uh, of age or older. Now, when we say industrial hemp, we often don't think that we're talking about the CBD part of the hemp, um, you know, industry or the hemp plant or whatever you want to call it. We think of that as more of the medicinal uh, thing going on with hemp. So I don't know. It's either way, it's industry related if you're pro if you're producing a lot of this oil for people to use. There's six mentions of hemp in the act, so let's go and look at the other ones. Uh, I should say initiative. So the purpose of this act is to make marijuana legal under state and local law for adults 21 years of age or older, to make industrial hemp legal under state and local law, and to control the commercial production and distribution of marijuana under a system that licenses, regulates, and taxes the business involved. Okay, so now we're down here at, uh, <clears throat> as used in this act, so this is like a definition uh, section of the proposal. Industrial hemp means a plant of genus cannabis and any part of that plant, whether growing or not, with delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol concentration that does not exceed three tenths of a percent on a dry weight basis or per volume or weight of marijuana infused product or the combined percent of delta nine tetracannabinol and tetrahydrocannabinol acid in any part of the plant 
of the genus cannabis uh, regardless of moisture content. Um, and then right here, right below it, marijuana means all of this, all parts of the plant and the genus of cannabis growing or not, and the seeds, plant, resin extracted from any part of the plant, and every compound, manufactured, salt, derivative, mixture, or preparation of the plant or its seeds or resin, including marijuana concentrates and marijuana-infused products. For the purpose of this act, marijuana does not include industrial hemp. So earlier when the state licensing people decided to define um, hemp as being marijuana and marijuana being hemp and they're one and the same, this, for the purpose of this act, I guess, that definition is um, <clears throat> not. They don't mean the same thing. And I think that it... In my opinion, what's my opinion? I think there should be a distinction between the two as long as there's some kind of a reason why people are still demonizing the thing that has all the THC in it. I mean, let's face it, it's all the cannabis plant. But we already have this built into our brains and the laws and all this other crap that marijuana is the one that they demonize because it gets you high and all that crap. Um, and hemp is the one that has more CBD in it and it grows really weird and you wouldn't want to do like indoor grow operations because it wouldn't really yield much in the way of, you know, harvestable product that you can make CBD from. So, yeah, I mean, come on. <clears throat> Down here we have... Uh, the intent of this act is for the department, which is the Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs, are to promulgate rules to provide for the issuance of additional types or classes of state licenses to operate marijuana-related businesses, including licenses that authorize only limited cultivation, processing, transportation, delivery, storage, sale, or purchase of marijuana licenses that authorize the consumption of marijuana within designated areas, licenses that authorize the consumption of marijuana at special events in limited areas, and for a limited time, licenses authorize cultivation for the purpose of propagation uh, and licenses intended to facilitate scientific research or education or regulate the cultivation processing distribution and sale of industrial hemp oh boy so now you are giving the responsibility of regulating the hemp industry back to the same people that just said that <laughs> hemp and marijuana are the same plant but at the same time hemp derived CBD is no good because hemp isn't allowed in Michigan for commercial reasons. I mean, so I I don't really want to hand the decision on how to regulate hemp facilities up to the to the licensing and regulatory affairs people because I'm starting to not trust them a little bit. Are you kidding me? There's really been nothing that they've done that, that makes me want to trust them in making these kind of decisions. So what's this all about? Notwithstanding any other law or provision of this act and except as otherwise provided in Section 4 of this act or the rules promulgated under, uh, the following acts are not unlawful, are not an offense, are not grounds for seizing or forfeiting property, are not grounds for arrest, prosecution, or penalty in any manner are not grounds for search or inspection except by as authorized by this act and are not grounds to deny any other right or privilege. And one of those is possessing, cultivating, processing, obtaining, transferring, or transporting industrial hemp. So that kind of nullifies any rules that they're going to make over at Laura about facilities and how you're going to regulate the production and distribution of hemp and hemp products. So I'm kind of uh I'm kind of confused here. If they make a rule and then I break it because I want to make some CBD out of my hemp and sell it, 
I guess it's selling is not covered here. Okay, never mind. Uh, or transfer, transfer it, or transport it. Uh, I don't know about that. And to be honest, after reading the six items where hemp is mentioned in here, I don't know if I like what I read. I don't know if I like the way that we're going to regulate hemp like marijuana. I mean, regulating marijuana like alcohol is already a little bit of a push for me because alcohol, way more dangerous, way more social costs, way more ways in which you have to regulate it or, you know. Um, so I'm not sure where I stand on that. It sounds like it'll be a little better, but it also sounds like we're going to have to push Laura to do something about hemp once this passes and at the same time hope and pray that they do the right thing meanwhile <laughs> laura has been proven that they're not out to do the right thing time and time again and also by the way what about what about where we stand with the, the current hemp rules and regulations and laws and all that crap and where was the people in Michigan acting on that? I'm starting to think there isn't really a very big movement for hemp in Michigan. And I'm thinking maybe I need to be that change I'm, you know, hoping for. <clears throat> Over here at the National Conference of State Legislators, it's a federal website that basically monitors activities that the states are doing um, in accordance to federal regulations and such. So what you got going on here is um, all this stuff they're talking about with industrial hemp, I don't see anywhere in here where they mention um, CBD as medicine. State legislators have taken as as a definition of what they're talking about <clears throat> for hemp. So a wide range of products, including fibers, textiles, paper construction, insulation materials, cosmetic products, animal feed, food, beverages, that all may use hemp. Um, and again, uh, using more than 25,000 products spanning nine markets, agricultural, agriculture, textile, recycling, automotive furniture, food, nutrition, beverage, paper, construction materials, and personal care. Now on the nutrition front, that's another one where a lot of people are like, well, hey, you know, I'm just buying it at the supplement store. It's a supplement. Um, Alex Jones sold me some supplements. Well, you know, the problem with that is, is it's the same thing. You just heard the licensing and regulatory affairs. They don't care what you call it. If it's CBD and it came from hemp, it's not allowed. Um, and if you got a medical card and the dispensary is allowed to operate and sell you stuff then you can go get your cbd there if you got your medical card and to get that you got to get it for these qualifying conditions so just one thing after another man so where are we at right now President Obama signed the Agricultural Act of 2014 or the 2014 Farm Bill, which included Section 7606, allowing for universities and state departments of agriculture to begin cultivating industrial hemp for limited purposes. Specifically, the law allows universities and state departments of agriculture to grow or cultivate industrial hemp if the industrial hemp is grown or cultivated for purposes of research and conducted under an agricultural pilot program or other agricultural or academic research. And the growing or cultivating of industrial hemp is allowed under the laws of the state in which such institution of higher education or state department of agriculture is located and such research occurs. The law also requires that the grow sites be certified by and registered with their state. State action. At least 35 states passed legislation related to industrial hemp. State policymakers have taken action to address various policy issues. The definition of hemp, licensure of growers, regulation and certification of seeds, statewide commissions and legal protection of growers. Some states establishing these programs require a change in federal laws or waiver from the DEA prior to implementation. 
<clears throat> and well, uh, as you can guess, 38 states in Puerto Rico considered legislation related to industrial hemp in 2017. Michigan's not one of them. Michigan's not one of them that's ever done anything about this. Um, they have granted some permits for some hemp grows that haven't yielded any results for any research that I know of. If anybody knows of some, please let me know in the comment section below because I'm very interested in finding out. According to this, uh, Michigan has created one law, created an industrial hemp research program allowing the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development and institutions of higher education to grow hemp for research purposes. I'd like to know how that's even going. Now compare that to other states that have done other things like Maryland, authorized Maryland Department of Agriculture to grow hemp for research purposes and then establish a license allowing individuals to plant, grow, harvest, process, possess, sell, buy industrial hemp in Maryland. And then Maine allows hemp for commercial purposes. They've made laws. Kentucky has all kinds of stuff going on. They man mandated a University of Kentucky Agricultural Experiment Station to oversee five-year hemp research program. Growers are required to use certified seeds. Um, and on that front, I hear that I did a story about how Washington um, was trying to move towards a thing that where you didn't need the cert seed certification. Uh, Hawaii, I believe, was trying to do the same thing. According to this website, and this might be out of date, I don't know. Um, oh, the Board of Agriculture Certified Hemp Seeds. So, you know, that's another thing that we need to move away from is the idea that people that produce hemp seeds, you know, now they have these seeds and it's contraband. I mean, that's just absurd. And, I mean, why do we even need to worry about hemp, man? <laughs> it, according to, like, all the reefer madness, the only reason we need to worry about weed and make it illegal is for the kids, right? Kids don't give a shit about hemp. <laughs> oh, come on, man. The only kids that care about hemp are the kids that use it for medicine. And, I mean, they really care about it. So... This is just uh, what what what's going on here is unbelievable that we have this kind of thing going on with the different hemp rules and hemp regulations and the federal government sitting back like, yep, it's all schedule one from here from what we're seeing. And we're just all accepting this shit for the last 80 plus years since, uh, you know, the marijuana tax act. Are you kidding me? Hemp and marijuana are not the same thing. They're two different plants. I mean, I, I know everybody's going to be like, come on, Brand, you're you're an old school. You're from the school of Jack Hare and Mal Frank and shit. What do you mean hemp and marijuana are the same or are two different plants? Well, they are. All right. I don't I don't know what, you know, what nuance you forgot to check into when you thought that everything's just a cannabis plant. But there's also distinctions between two different kind of rose plants that might look exactly the same. So there is differences, and they're very important differences. And probably the most important difference is that one of them actually gets you high. And for me, that's not a big difference. That shouldn't matter. You know, like you can still call it medicine. You know, and you can still say it's safe medicine. I mean, they do say that about Vicodin. They say it's medicine and they say it's safe. <laughs> we see how that got, where that got us, didn't it? I mean, don't be fooling yourself. The FDA is saying, yeah, Vicodins are safe. That's a Schedule 2 or a Schedule 3 in some cases. Some opioids are even Schedule 3. I mean, come on. <sighs> but if it's safe and you can grow it in the ground then you got 5 million different laws governing it or banning it all together um but if you look at it overall Michigan, Connecticut, 
and a few others where they have just this one thing. And look at Connecticut, created an industrial hemp feasibility study. So they're not even trying to grow it just to see if it'll, uh, you know, be something that they can work with. They're just like, is this feasible or not? <laughs> what do they have a study group on that? So if you see just one check mark like Michigan or Nebraska allows a post-secondary institution or Nebraska Department of Agriculture to grow hemp for research purposes. That means they're garbage. They're not trying to do anything. They're sitting on their hands while people are wondering what's going on. Allows hemp growth for commercial and research purposes in South Carolina. Well, that's pretty good for just one thing. Because they're smart. They know. And, you know, the Carolinas, this whole area right here, used to be big time hemp producers. This is the biggest hemp producing block of, you know, land in the whole world. And of course you had Colorado, California, and Washington were also very big producers in Oregon before the uh, before it became illegal. And last but not least, I hate to this is like taking way longer than I wanted it to. Sorry for keeping you on this story. But I do want to be complete. And this is the you know, finally, this is in the report from Americans for Safe Access. Remember, they're the ones with the tweet here talking about Michigan now regulates CBD oil. Well, you know, they gave Michigan this B plus rating. And right down here, there's a thing in there where you can get 10 points taken off, which would take Michigan out of the B territory and into the C territory, right? Yeah, it sure would. Or no, that's a percentage. So no, it's not going to do that. They probably would still be in the B territory with this at a zero, but do not impose bans on CBD. Just because you say they regulate it doesn't mean there's not bans. That instantly made their bans. <clears throat> now, let's see what this bans thing is all about. Does not impose limits or bans on CBD. Does the state require that all forms of medical cannabis must have a minimum C CBD level? Some states have passed CBD and rich or CBD only legislation. So we're not talking about that, but what we're talking about is regulating the CBD itself. The legislative intent behind this has been to eliminate intoxicating properties of cannabis. However, these preparations only benefit a small portion of the state's patient population because CBD has been shown to work more effectively in tandem with other plant components. Even among the minority of patients who can benefit from low THC preparations, minimum CBD requirements restrict access to the ratio of CBD to THC that may work best for them. Now, this is all true, but that doesn't mean that somebody that would normally just go buy a bottle of aspirin or even take a Vicodin every day couldn't benefit greatly from the, the hemp-derived CBDs that we've seen in these stores. For example, while some pediatric patients with seizure disorders benefit greatly from a 30 to 1 ratio, other children will respond better to 1 to 1 ratios and anything in between or beyond. Imposing arbitrary cannabinoid level minimum requirements are not rooted in science and provide no benefit to the public health uh, of a state. Now, that's true but saying maximum levels are a thing too or having to have some kind of a level of THC that's uh, outside of the scope of hemp-derived CBD, it's basically just saying that CBD is not medicine on its own. And I don't think anybody believes that. So Americans for Safe Access, please get back to me. I really want to know what your feelings are about this. And thank you to um, <clears throat> everybody that tuned in. Sorry I held you up so long on this. And thank you over here at uh, Destination 420. I'm not sure if Destination 420 is the, the, the full-on dispensary that's located in the same location as the CBD store was. But... <clears throat> thank you guys for letting me come in and take this picture and that's all i got on this man 
Everybody can just argue about it in the comments section below. Uh, I hope that I, I hope this information was useful because a lot of people are wondering what what's going on. And for you know, for the sake of wrapping it up nice and tight, once again, if you don't have a medical marijuana card, then CBD products are basically illegal for you. Now, if you want to get CBD products, you have to qualify for a medical mar Your condition that you're using CBD for has to be on the list and you have to go get a medical marijuana card from usually a doctor that does that. Um, you can get your own doctor to write a medical marijuana recommendation. That's possible too. And, you know, I hate to even have to be telling people all this, but these are the answers to those questions. Can you go to Walmart and buy some CBD? I don't think you can. If you can, tell me where to go and I'll check into it. Um, but if there's any other questions about this, put them down below. I'll try to remember to answer them on Sunday. I'll be on the live show on DC 420 LA with Dave and Chella. Check it out. And, uh, yeah, I'll be talking about this again then. So thanks for tuning in. Have a good one. Peace.